Hello and welcome to my next tutorial. So we are back in our good old friend Mori. And in today's video we are going to create here this cool looking texture. So what is special on this texture? Actually this texture is coming from texturing XYZ. So I just downloaded it from there. And the cool thing is we have full control over every aspect of this texture. Look at that. So cool. So we can change every color in that texture. We can we can even break it up by 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 a noise. What what do we want? Do we have more of it? Do we want to have less of some of the layers in it? And that's pretty cool actually. And this gives us a lot of flexibility. So we we can completely change it here to something more dirty and, or rust, whatever. It's just we have full control over every layer of this of this texture we have created here. We can also alter it with, with a noise here to, to break it up even more. So that's pretty cool actually. The setup is super simple. One thing you need to know before we start is you need the extension pack for that to work. If you don't have the Mari extension pack, you will not be able to follow because we are using some extension pack notes here. And if you don't have it, I can really recommend to, to get an extension pack for more. It's actually worth every penny and it's a great addition to Vanilla Mari. Even the Mari already ships with quite a lot of cool notes and features. Mari extension pack is just pushing it to another level. All right, instead of just create everything from scratch again and bother you with press this button and insert this note, we will just go through step by step. So what do I have here? Here I have a simple tileable node where I have a manifold node that is plugged here into the texture node here as you can see this is just the texture that I showed you earlier as next we go into the color range to mask node what is this node doing I can show you that color to mask here so when we plugged it in here's a little gotcha if you have a manifold node connected to the texture, your view transform here on the bottom will change, which is a bit weird, but you can fix that by plug this node here into a channel, then it will just follow whatever rule you have here. Or you can use the view as color node here and then it's fine as well. Let's go and view here this guy what I did. So this cool node allows you to pick a color on a texture and create a mask out of that. So let's go and we want to change it here for raw pixel. Go here for the, for the dropper here. And then we can select an area we want. And as you can see, whatever turns now white is selected as a mask. So if we hide here the background, you can see what we got. And we can change here how much we want to have included of that, how less. We can also change here the bias of it. We can also kind of reduce the gain of it. It's actually pretty handy and you can kind of combine four different colors here to one mask, which is pretty cool. There's also a, a, a eight times version of this node where you can add uh, eight of them. So you have also tons of other features here in it as well, but I don't want to cover them right now because it's not a tutorial about this node here. It's a tutorial about our setup here. So what I then did, after I created here this mask, so as you can see, I've just picked here this bright part of the texture. So I've just picked here this bright part. And we are, that's what I mean, look, look. Now it's switching here to scalar and it's just, and it's just super weird. So yeah, if you, if you view this guy here again, it's just working again. See, and now it's changes again. That's a bit, it's a bit odd, but yeah, we are not going to discuss about that now. And yeah, we need to change here um, that one again, so that we can get here the correct values. So what I then did, I have simply color nodes where I have a color in it, nothing fancy, it's just a color. And I have here a second color, which is a bit brighter. You can also color pick from the texture or you can use your own colors you want to use whatever and this is going into a mix node why a mix node because we only want to blend here between 
A and B, and we don't need the uh, blending modes. And the mix note is way more, way, way lighter as the merge note, for example. But you can use a merge note as well if you want. But working more optimized will give you a better time in Mario. So what I then did here is I did it kind of four times. It's the exact same. I just picked different values. So we can view this guy here. So we can hide this. You can see this is the brightest, brightest area I've picked here and made the brightest, brightest color here. And here is another one. Here you can see this is a more darker one. And then what I did here, I multiplied that here. And now I can change with a, with a cloud noise here, how much I want to have this layer and where. So I can, I can break it up even more, which is super, super handy. So I can also say, hey, I don't want to have that. I want to have, a one to one match to our texture here, but we can look at that in just a bit. As you can see here, I also introduced the cloud noise. With the cloud noise here, I'm giving a bit more structure. So with a pretty high roughness, you, you can get super fine details, which is super cool. And with the overlay blend mode here, this is just black and white. And with the overlay mode here, I'm just changing a bit. Some of it gets a bit brighter, some of it gets a bit darker. And I can also just say, hey, I don't want to have it at all. But we can view that here as well in just a bit. So, and here, as you can see, here's just the last bit where I picked here, I think that darkest, darkest parts. Yeah, some, just, just some splotches. And we can fully change here also how much we want of that. And what I mean by that is that, okay. Let's go through that again in a more visual way. So here we have the color notes where we can change the color as I just showed in the intro. And here we have the cloud. And with the cloud, look at that. It's so cool. It ac actually, it, it's still the same texture, but we actually can make kind of different variation of this texture. So we can also soften it a bit if we want to have a bit more of a softer look or we can crunch the hell out of it. And here, as I said, we can we can say, okay, look, from that layer, just that specific layer, we can do it, that on every layer here, but just on that layer, I don't want to have it everywhere. Look, now I can remove it on some areas. I can, I can simply remove that area. Look, now it gets way more clean here, for example or I can make it super busy and super noisy. This is really up to you. You can you can feed in here <laughs> whatever you want to go even beyond this basic setup that I have here. You can also feed into here kind of whole materials if you want or different textures. We could, we could even use here a completely different texture in, instead of this color node. So this is the possibilities are endless. You can also group all of that, save it as a gizmo, promote a few parameters and make a few different of them. And then on your next hard surface project, you can take use of that. It's actually pretty handy. It's absolutely amazing. So this was basically it. So just as a short recap, we used here a basic um, photo texture we picked some values out of that, made a mask out of that here with this, with this mask from this color range to mask notes. And after that, we just brought in some basic colors to recreate the layers of this texture. So when we have a look, this, this texture is kind of layered with different details. Oh, come on, can I resize it, please? So we have the more brownier patches, we have the more lighter patches, we have the super dark patches. So this is kind of broken down into layers, what we have here, and you can do more as for if you want. That depends on how, how precise you want to go in, but I, I found here four worked pretty, pretty nice. And you can also use, as I said, just another photo texture to plug it in here, and then you can get even more details. And the cool thing is we can actually fully tile that. So we can we can tile that even more. We can we can change the rotation of it. So as you can see, we just have to change here the cloud as well. I mean, technically you can input here the manifold also to the cloud, but in the end, I found it actually not too bad to have a bit of a separate control over that. So we can we can change that here now as well. So we can also change here 
the position. Yeah, so you can you can go crazy with with that. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope this is a cool little technique that is going to help you in your everyday texture artist life or to push your assets to the next level and make you enjoy doing some texturing work. So thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Bye bye guys.